So, welcome back to some Minecraft. Hello, hello, hello. We've got to sleep real quick. <laughs> Kicking off the episode with a quick nap, because it is night time. Um, as you can see, or as you hopefully saw, I've upgraded. We've upgraded to diamond armor. Only took me like, what, five episodes? Also did a little bit of building, mostly miscellaneous building around this little area. We're going to be doing some building on camera though. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, I want to get a lot of like the outlines of this place done. So I'm building mostly in spruce. I brought over like a bunch of spruce and dark oak because why not? Um, I need to like come over and drop a bunch of it off anyway. I've been doing a lot of farming over at a separate location outside of the snow biome. It's not too far away and I'm probably going to do a project there because it's a really nice place. But I want to make sure that we've got this area built first. Um, and also, it looks like a bit of a bomb site over there at the moment. Um, there was like this saying that I used to get told about like, when I had a messy room, it looks like a bomb's hit it. Um, <laughs> and that's kind of like what it's looked like at the moment because everything's all over the fucking place. So, I want to wait until everything over there is kind of like looking a little bit more uniform and a little bit nicer, but a bunch of my farms are currently over there in terms of like crop farms and cow farms and things like that. Things that are just a little bit easier to do, not in the snow. <laughs> um, where's my deep slate? Oh, that's my deep slate. I forgot what deep slate looked like because I've been playing in a different texture pack. Uh, I also want to... So I want to do some skeletons for buildings. I put these little outlines. I wanted to map out this town, basically, so that I can terraform it all off camera and then hopefully we can do some like actual proper like building and progress for this place because this place is not meant to be a big build i it's really not um but it is taking me a little while like that's got to come down just gonna like really neaten the place up because it is just looking like a mess right now but i want to map out some houses i already put down this red wool red wool wool bloody hell so we're going to be putting down some guidelines for houses and stuff and I'm going to be mixing up the style of the houses compared to what the starter house looks like. Because I don't think the starter house is particularly imaginative and I really like this style that we've got going on so I kind of want to base it more around the storage room. Um, we also need to find a location to do our first city. Um, I don't really know how many cities I want to do. I aimed to do nine on the last world and it obviously did not go well. I think just getting like one main central snowy city set up is probably going to be the best idea. So I'm kind of just going to go with the flow. And if it goes well, it goes well. I think what I want to do is have a little bit of a roof here. Oh, I've done this wrong. I've done that wrong. Hold up. Hold up. I keep on, uh, my microphone is like right in front of the TV, so I can never see what's on my hot bar, <laughs> like in the middle of the hot bar, so I'm like having to lean across slightly to figure out what's there, but I want like a little bit of a roof on this section here, and I want these buildings that actually like house people, rather than being like warehouses and storage and stuff, I want these buildings to be taller. Um, so, and I also want them to sort of resemble like a worker's bunkhouse. So, we're going to have sort of like a general downstairs canteen area. And then the upper floors are literally going to be packed with beds. Um, or things that possibly resemble beds. Because I don't know if I can put beds down because of tampering with the iron farm. I think they should be okay. I mean, I've got my beds down in there. I think it should be okay at this point. Um, let's have a look. How how much higher do we want to take this? I think we could have like a little connecting bridge section. Actually, that could be quite cool. Let's do that for this for this house. I want to have this house connecting up to here, I guess. So we'll do like a little bridge support coming across. That should look quite funky. I sort of want to go steampunk, but not like heavy steampunk, so I want some small aspects of steampunk to make its way into these builds, and then for my city I want to go like proper steampunk with gears and um, 
like the the piping and things like that the stuff that i was really building towards doing on my last world uh, over at Greydale but unfortunately never got to really flush out and finish that kind of stuff i would like to put more of a focus on so we'll bring up this roof i want this roof to be a little bit taller than the previous ones um we'll go ahead and i think round about here we'll bring that across want it to be a little bit uneven a little bit lopsided and stuff i only really want there to be sort of like a handful of builds here because again it's not meant to be like a big significant land point like land point landmark whatever um it's just meant to be a hub basically for us starting off three four so we'll bring this all the way across bring this up here and then we'll bring it all the way back and then I think this building is probably one that I can get away with doing a third floor on because of how wide it already is. And it sort of gives that vibe of it being a little bit more of a, a head building. We can probably put like maybe a little command point inside of here where you could, you could maybe have like a notice board and things like that. Maybe like a little gathering table where they can talk about stuff that has been going on in the town. Because even though it's small in size, it is still going to be a town and it is still going to be linked to a city and that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to have like purpose to it, basically. So what I want to do is I want to have these roofs that kind of close in a little bit on each side. And then here in the middle section, I think we maybe have it like raised up. I don't really know how that's going to look. It doesn't really create a third floor, actually, does it? I thought it might, but... I guess there isn't really that much space for it. Maybe if... If we bridge... The arch up like this, we could maybe do it. So we bring that up by two. Like that. Do the same over here. And then... What would we have to uh see we're not we're still not gonna get that point okay well we'll get the point but it will be mostly decorative i guess because look even that comes up there so i'm not sure about this that's two up into there two up into there See, so I might as well, okay, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a large double A framed roof on top of this thing. Because that's the effect it's literally having anyway, so I might as well just go with that. Um, and I guess we can always, like, put some stuff in the roof. I think I want to focus on there being more, like, storage stuff up in the roof. Maybe, like, weapons and things like that, or extra tools or something like that. Um, like a bunch of iron tools that are just kind of spare laying about. I don't want to go like too deep into the interior decorative, de <laughs> the interior decorating side of all of this, but just getting like a bit of a basic idea for what it's all going to look like. So let me just pillar up real quick, hold up, wheel quick, wheel quick, turn it to Jonathan Wass. Bloody hell. Still one of my favourite little, like, video game cameos from Fable 3. <laughs> There's no reason for him to be in that game, but he is, and it's fantastic. Okay, let's, uh... I, I really hope that the new Fable game has, like, really iconic British voice actors in. So that you can hear somebody and immediately go, Oh, that's so-and-so. It would be amazing if they got Stephen Fry to return for Reva. I've gone on a tangent. <laughs> it's fine. So what I want to do over here, um, these are going to be, these little sections here are going to be tiny little warehouses that we can stockpile full of anvils, chests, crafting tables, all of that kind of stuff. So we'll mark them out real quick. And then what I'll do is I will put the roofs on all of these builds off camera. And it'll be a perfect little jump cut. It'll go boom. And they'll all be done. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> because I don't want to bore you guys through it all like I did with the with the storage room. I feel like I, I already did enough, but I wanted to show you guys at least like the skeleton of what these will look like. And I think some of these will have different roofs. I think that one will probably be more pointed, similar to that. And this one will be more of a, like an A-frame. But I will crack on with the roofs, and I'll see you guys after. Okay, so one roof done. Uh, we're probably going to fill in the rest of this build first, before I move on to the second one. Get a bit of a vibe for how we're going to be doing these buildings, because I want to take that down. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Um... So, they did something kind of interesting, um, they released the Conquest Texture Pack. I don't know if I spoke about this earlier in the video, because I'm recording it on a different day, but I'm going to go into detail about it. So, back when I first got into Minecraft, just in general, when the, the game first released, and I don't remember us getting, like, creative mode straight away, I guess, um, and I used to watch a builder called Shin from the Yogscast. That was the sort of first introduction to building for me. Um, and you know, some stuff has happened since then uh, that we won't really comment on <laughs> regarding Shin, and I don't particularly like watching him anymore. Um, and also, his building style is quite outdated in my opinion. Uh, however, somebody else that sort of stemmed from Shin, um, that I got recommended in Shin's sort of like side playlist way back when, um, was a, a YouTuber called Jamsy Boy, and not Jamsy Boy, Jamsy Boy, and it's kind of weird because there's some random dude called Jamsy uh, Boy now. I haven't watched his videos, no disrespect, <laughs> but I'm just saying the names are suspiciously similar. Um, and he used to do all of these really, really detailed. Um, medieval style builds. It was phenomenal to me and he used to use a texture pack called Conquest and he did a video with like the creator of Conquest and it was really really cool and I was so jealous because I didn't have like any kind of medieval texture pack or anything like that that added more detail and better graphics to the game and you know, I was stuck with default or whatever they put on the store at the time. I think the fantasy texture pack, if anybody remembers that, with, like, the gold trim on everything. Pardon me. I just hiccuped. Um, but, yeah, they used to put, uh, like, these sort of rip-off <laughs> medieval packs on the store. And they just weren't really as good, to be honest. Um, they were a little bit naff. And we were randomly discussing it the other day um, about a realm that I'm on and we were like talking about well maybe we should add a texture pack and mix things up a little bit keep people interested and I was talking about conquest and looking into getting conquest on Xbox because like if you've got your world on PC bedrock you can really add anything you want and then it applies to console players um, so we were trying to figure out if there was like a bedrock version of Conquest and there wasn't a download file and then we went onto the store and lord and behold the Conquest texture pack had come out two days ago on the store. Like incredible amount of luck. <laughs> it literally could not have been any more perfect. I bought it immediately, no hesitation at all. But then I found myself in a bit of a predicament because I really wanted to use it um, but I wanted to use it for YouTube because it's such a detailed pack and you can do, it kind of changes the entire way that you build. And I, I loaded up into this world and I took a look around and everything was a fucking mess. Like, you can't really texture using the Conquest texture pack because everything is already textured for you. So you could build this entire building out of cobble whack a roof on and do some detailing and it would look fine. You can do an entire cobble build. Um, whereas in the default, we're left to more, like, texturing and stuff, which is... It's kind of weird, actually, to log back into the world after playing on Conquest and, you know, switching up how I build. So I've been treating it almost as, like, a completely different game mode. Like, we've got base game, and then I log in, and we have advanced medieval game. Um, and that's kind of how I've been treating it. Uh, and I don't know, I went through a phase of like, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should go ahead and just 
you know, start a completely fresh world and, you know, do conquest on there, it'll be fine. Um, but at the end of the day, I think, like, keeping this as vanilla as possible, like, even, I think, maybe even possibly switching back to the default texture pack at some stage, um, I don't know, I might switch back and see how it looks, and if it really doesn't look that different, I might keep it in this, but I think keeping it as vanilla as possible is probably going to be the best idea. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really surprised by just how much I've enjoyed actually finally getting to use it. It's been so long, <laughs> like, I've been waiting years to use this texture pack. And it's it's such a cool looking texture, um, but yeah, if you if you if you like the look of it on the store, I definitely would recommend grabbing it. Uh, it's perfect for like medieval builds and stuff. I cannot stop endorsing it enough. I'm not like sponsored or anything, but happily will be, <laughs> even though I don't know if they've got the money for that type of thing. <laughs> um, but I've been thinking about like ways that I could maybe still incorporate it into this, and I'm thinking like maybe we could build a town in that texture pack. Um, it would be really, really strange outside of the texture pack, but it could be really far away or underground or something, like it doesn't have to be out in the open. Um, I've also been considering doing some videos on the realm that I'm part of because I'm kind of just on my own building stuff. Um, so I figured it wouldn't be that big of a deal for me to hop on and, you know, show you guys around the stuff that I'm building, that I'm doing sort of like Hobbit Hole inspired stuff. Um, but anywho, back to this. So we're going to do, uh, this second floor is going to be primarily wood. Uh, probably go in with the dark oak. Yeah, I think the dark oak should be fine. As long as I've got enough of it, which I emptied my inventory. I don't know why I emptied it. <laughs> I'm kind of just sort of improvising this little area for now. I want to make a lot of signs. A lot of signs, because signs are a really freaking amazing way of adding, like, little pieces of decoration. And I want it to look a little bit sort of shanty and boarded up. Uh, we're going to grab the barrels. Hopefully our villagers down in the iron farm won't link to them, but if they do, it's not that big of a deal. Um, where did I empty all my goddamn wood? Did I just throw it into, like, one of these? Oh, I must have thrown it into here. Of course, into my deep slate chest, or the former deep slate chest. <laughs> deep slate chest no more, apparently. Okay, let's make a butt ton of signs. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm gonna make a bunch of dark oak ones. 78? Bloody hell. Make just 15 for now and see how we go. But what I want to do with these, so... I did it briefly on my previous world. So, you can use signs for, like, a butt ton of stuff, and it looks great. But specifically on the corners like this, to add, like, little reinforced caps, looks pretty good. And then also, having them overlay on some of the stone, to maybe look like um, it's reinforced the stone as much as possible. I'm not going to do it for these builds in particular. I think I like just having them on these little cap sections. Um... But they're a really cool little feature to, to use. I'm going to put some above the door. We'll put like a sort of a beam going across. And I think it looks okay. And then also, we can do something pretty similar with... Oh, we can't do it with cobblestone uh, buttons. I completely forgot that you have to have regular stone buttons. For some reason, there isn't a cobblestone button. <laughs> a single cobblestone button. But I want to go into sort of like trying to detail a little bit more, I guess, because a lot of my builds lately have been quite flat and basic. So I really want to come in and like add these little hints of detail. And then my windows here are going to be white stained windows to make them look like they've been frosted over entirely. So we'll fill in the rest of these walls. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I really want to try and get this town done relatively soon, because otherwise I feel like it's never going to get done. <laughs> because I already want to go off and like start new builds and stuff, and I need to get this finished. I need to get this finished first. 
It just has to be done. It's gotta be done. But all of this bottom layer is gonna be stone related materials. Um, this section here, I'm probably gonna plug up because I want to put like reinforcements and stuff around that side of the building. It's a very big build. Um, or it's not a very big build, but you know what I mean. It's a two story build, so I want to put some supports. And also, we've got this walkway. I think we can also plug up the back, to be honest. I don't think we need to have this back section exposed at all. I could do with some extra stone to put in there because it's a little bit too cobblestone y. Um, but it's looking okay, it's looking okay. And then I want to add some shutters. But what we're going to do is, so I got this from BWO in his video where he was building his house. And he put, I think he said he got it from somebody else as well. But he put these shutters up, like so. But instead of just regular shutters, he put signs on the backs of them. And it just adds a little bit more detail. And I actually really, really liked it. So, we're going to steal it. Grab these dark oak signs. Boom. Boom. It's just such a tiny little detail. But I think it looks so much cooler. And I've been doing that with a lot of, like, my shutters and stuff now. It's just trying to... Again, it's signs. I feel like signs are so underappreciated. Especially, like, if they don't have any text on them, I don't think they lag the game, like, at all. So, it's weird to me that people don't use them more. I'm going to try and use some barrels. I kind of want to put... No, I don't want to put barrels there. I was going to, like, maybe strip out the middle section and put some barrels as, like, a reinforced wall. But I'm thinking maybe we could put them at the bottom of each log. But I would have to build up a little bit. Uh, like that. How does that look from the outside? In fact, if I do it here as well... We can get a little bit of a better look. Go up three. Boom. Let's see. Oh, I actually kind of like it. I actually kind of like it. Maybe we could put some here as well, underneath these signs. I'll break that one as well. Just having a little bit of ex an experiment, I guess. <laughs> To see how this goes. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I think if we stand back. It'll, it'll kind of blend in a little bit. Yeah I like it. I'm a fan. So I'm probably going to keep that, that theme running. Of. Barrels being at the base of each of these supports. And then also in the top section. I don't want to do them in the very top up here. Because I feel like that's a little bit much. Um, but maybe we can do it for some of the exposed ones. Like some of them you can barely see. But I guess we'll, we'll sort of see how it goes at, like along the way. Um, okay. So I'm going to go around and replace all of these barrels and stuff. And get these put in. Oh bugger. Not like that I'm not. And we'll get this build finished finished up. Uh, we'll get a door whacked on. And that'll be like dorm build 1. Uh, it literally just needs the door. Uh, windows. And sort of like a basic interior. Going on. I don't think it needs like a massive amount of. Effort put into it. It's only going to be a dorm room. It's only going to be a dorm room. So I'm just grabbing. The final pieces. Of what I need to finish this first build in. I say I am, I cannot actually find where I've just thrown <laughs> the majority of my stuff. Uh, it's fine, that'll do, I guess. <laughs> I just keep sort of throwing it into chests and it vanishes. Um, okay, they're spruce ones, I don't want spruce ones. I want dark oak. Oh, I've just made a bed by accident. <laughs> that was not meant to happen at all. Okay. So, this build, like I said, almost done. We've got the windows to put in, and I want to put in some sort of placeholders for the interior. Um, I'm really liking how this place is turning out. I think it looks as close to what I imagined as possible. There's still a few things that I need to do to finish this up. Um, but again, I'll do it, like, afterwards, off-camera. The Just little tweaks and stuff. 
uh, but I want to put in the windows, I'll oh, frost it up windows because it's chilly outside. I think I would like to renovate this and put some sort of furnace, um, not furnace, but like a fireplace thing. I don't really know what or how or where, <laughs> um, but I would like to do it. Uh, let me go ahead and go to that. And then we'll go ahead and throw that in there. Do the same over this side so it's symmetrical. Boom. Like things to be symmetrical sometimes. Oop. Oop. I pressed the wrong button twice in a row. <laughs> there was not even any need for me to do it either. That was weird. And then whack that in there. Whack that in there. Boom. And then this side wall is going to be a little bit different because... I'm going to need to put in a door here. So in fact what I'm going to do is we'll bring these here. Like so. Whack that there, and then we can put a door in further down the line when we do this second house over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to put planks in here as sort of like siding. Uh, like side panels. Uh, and then I want to take... Oh, I haven't... Oh, I didn't bring dark oak clogs. I was going to say I want to take that all the way up to the roof. Um, again, like little details like that, like I want to put little beams in the roof. Um, I can kind I can do one on camera real quick to show you what I mean, um, but I want to put a couple of those in the roof and stuff just to add like little pieces of detail so that it feels like I've put more effort in. Like, I think a lot of stuff in the past I would sort of half-ass it because I just couldn't really be bothered, and I was like, oh, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, it's good enough, you know. Um, whereas this time around, I kind of just want to put more effort in and really polish things up. Like, this build, for example, it's good enough, but sometimes good enough is not good enough, and good enough needs to become perfect. <laughs> I really like the use of the floor in this, I won't lie. Um, it looks sort of like... I don't know, when you shave this, um, is it shaving it? Peel it. When you peel it, pardon me, um, <laughs> don't, be don't be shaving the wood. But when you peel the bark, I think um, stripped wood in a pattern like this can look very, like, neat and high quality and, like, upper class um, when it comes to, like, medieval kind of stuff. Whereas how it is now, um, I think gives more of, like, a... more of, like, a shanty kind of vibe, like, sort of a not very well off kind of place, if that makes sense. I'm hoping that makes enough sense. Um, cause it's like, oh, well they can't even afford to, they can't even afford to get lovely peeled wood. Disgusting. It's kind of like they've just literally thrown the wood down on the floor and that's it kind of thing. That's what I'm going for. Um, okay. Windows, finish up the windows and then I'll put in a beam. Boom, boom. So for the beams, I guess I'll use dark oak. I was going to grab um, I grabbed some spruce slabs because I was going to use those. But I guess because I've got more dark oak, I'll use those. Uh, but literally all I want to do is, like in these sections up here. Is that, uh, that forms a whole block, doesn't it? Sugar. Oh, these are going to be a little bit tricky to do. They're going to be a little bit finicky. But literally just this, like every so often, just to add a little support in the roof. And I don't know why, but it just adds a whole lot more to the build, especially for the interiors. Like it's insane, like just having something up there to show that the roof is supported, it adds a lot, at least in my opinion it does. Uh, and then I brought a, a butt ton of beds over <laughs> because I wanted to put some of them down up here and downstairs and stuff. So I want to have like bunk beds, I guess. 
Uh, how high is too high? I guess we'll go... I think that's okay. And we'll put one there. And then we can have, like, a nice little... Um... Thing here. With, like, a ladder on, maybe? I feel like that might be okay. I think that looks alright. And then we can maybe put one on this side as well. And save us some downstairs space. Because there needs to be sort of like... There needs to be both a storage area and a kitchen area downstairs. Put it downstairs. Is it downstairs? Bloody hell. So we go up two. Boom. He's got not a lot of space. Oh, actually, I don't know if I like them being right on the edge like that. Um... Okay, we could move it sideways, could we? No, we couldn't. He's still going to roll off. Okay, we will just put more beds downstairs, I guess. There can sort of be like an upstairs dorm area and then a downstairs dorm area. We can improvise the rest of the space. Oh, I didn't want to jump in bed, but... <laughs> We're testing to see if it works, apparently. It works. Fantastic. I can't wait to randomly die in, like, a week's time and not realise where I've respawned. But I want this to house uh, just the four people and then roughly four people in this one as well because in my head, like, eight miners is kind of a lot. <laughs> um, for both Minecraft and in, like, Skyrim and stuff, they don't really populate towns that much. So, I'm kind of just thinking eight people between these two houses, plus, you know, the guards that are up on that tower and whichever other towers and whatever else will probably also use these rooms. So, I don't know, it makes sense to me not to, like, not to cram them packed full of beds, you know, I don't want it looking too weird. Um, but yeah, for the most part, that's it. For the most part, that's that build done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Like I said, I'd like to put maybe a chimney in somewhere. Um, but that's all sort of like a work in progress. We'll sort of do it as we go along. Um, probably do it in the next episode when we work on this build. And then we've also got the little warehouses to work on. Um, I need to add in some more wall debris going around the area. Um, and I'll probably do one more guard tower. I'm realising with how small this sort of settlement is, I don't need like three. I think two will be okay. And then also, the crane. The crane is, like, the main thing that needs to be here. Um, I want to do something in this space at some stage, but I just haven't really decided what. Um, maybe I can come up with something. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to leave a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the build, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Minecraft. Bye-bye.